So we lay foundation on some reasons why you should what? Why should you pray? Number one, God commanded it. And commandments are to be obeyed. In Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, it said, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always take note to pray and not to faint. So God expects us to pray daily, not occasionally. Men ought always, how many? Not occasionally to pray. Do you know prayerlessness is sin? God sees it as a sin when you don't pray. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23, it said, moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray. So when you don't pray, you are committing what? Sin. God sees it that way. Men ought always to what? Pray. Say so from today. I will be prayerful. Say it like a child of God. Say it and mean it. Because it's a command from God. Say so here. Another reason why you should pray, number two, it secures God's help. You secure God's what? You secure God's help when you pray. Oh God, help me. It is in prayer you, he will help you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, let's read together. I want to go. Let us therefore come what? Boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Where do you get help from? Through prayer. Oh God help me. No, no, no. You have to pray, not by shouting. Anytime you want help, what do you do? Pray. In Psalm 60, 11 and 12, give us help from trouble for vain is the help of men. Through God, we shall do what? Fairly. For he it is that attacked on our enemies. Psalm 56 verse 9. Want to go. When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. When I cry, that means when I pray. This I know for God is for me. So I lift up my hands to his when I come and what? My help coming from the Lord. That does not mean you put your eye like this, oh. I will lift means I will pray to God. That's the meaning. From whence comment my help. I will pray to the Sammy said, it's not saying that I will lift my eyes and put the eye like no, no. I will look up to God and pray to Him to help me in times when I need Him. Is that clear, sir? Psalm 1 to 1, 1 and 2. May God give you help. Amen. You will be helpless without God's help. Prayer is a major tool for securing God's help. How many need the help of God? Say, Lord, from today, I ask you help me at every point. Of my need. Paul speaking made a statement in Acts 26 22. He said, Look at what Paul said. Having therefore obtained help of God, I obtained help of God. I continued unto this day with the both small and great, saying none of these things, sorry, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. I obtained help. It the help of, as I kept praying, God was God helping me. May God help someone. Amen. If you are the one God will help, say amen. amen. So as I pray, I know God will help me. Why should I pray? Number three, prayer generates power for accomplishment. Prayer generates what? It's the power room for accomplishment. Prayer is where you generate what? Power for accomplishment. In Acts chapter 4, 29 to 31. And now, Lord, behold, they are treacherous. When you are threatened, where do you go to? Prayer. And grant, shall we do together one to go? And now, Lord, behold, they are treacherous. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness we may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done by the holy, by the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had what? Yes. They spoke into the 930. They look at them. And when they are what? Yes. The place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with what? Yes. 
They generated what? Power through prayers. All this vegetable Christianity is because you don't pray. John, John Christianity. Where you pray, generate what? Power. He said, shut up, you devil. Quiet, you, you dull head. They threaten them. A witch threatening you. You know the idea why you're running for a witch? No prayer. Pastor, pray for me. Ta! Get up and pray. How can a wizard in your command be making you to run away? A liar running away from a dog. That is why you pray in the closest. This man threatening me. I give you seven days. You are gone. You generate power in the inner room. You pray, 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 pray. You come out. He said, now I decree seven days. Be gone. On the seventh day, it's gone. You generate what? Power in prayer room. It's inside prayer room you generate what? I mean, what to generate power? Would you like that someone threaten to you and they smile? He said, wait for me, I'm coming. I think you threaten me, wait for me. You go and pray, 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 come back and say, listen, I give you three days. Three days, three days, you are gone. And on the third day, my man. <laughs> prayer generates what? Powerful. He said, grant unto us, I would all what? Boldness. May grace to pray be released upon you right now. I was speaking when we were flying to Abuja to someone on the aircraft, and I said, Listen, sir, we are talking, my wife and I. When this church started, don't think that power just, we just, we just power, just, we just get up today and say, Power, power. I prayed non stop for two years. Non stop, Monday, Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Monday, Sunday. My wife is a witness. Monday, Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Monday, every midnight. There was no midnight I did not pray. Monday, Sunday, Monday, Sunday. I wake up to midnight, pray OT to two. Monday to Sunday. Not Saturday, the same. Sunday, the same. For two solid years. So you see, you don't you don't get up with Pandan Yam. Sit down. After you eat, you say, power, 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 power. Now, power, power, power. Can do that while you're your confidence. Then they won't go to toilet. Come, mm, but when they want to do power, you know, <laughs> you know, the way they go to toilet, mm, those ones are different. You're a Christian. Go and generate what? Power. It's in the prayer room to generate power. So here. Number four. Why should you pray? You encounter God's glory through prayer. You encounter what? Through Prayer. You encounter his glory through prayer. In Luke chapter 9, 28 to 32. I'll read to the 8, you read to the 9. And it came to pass about an eight days. After these saints, he took Peter, take note, John and James. And went up into a mountain to pray. Listen, I studied and I discovered that all the places where Jesus, God is all, nobody followed him to pray. The one even carry people they slept. Start waiting for people to pray for you. The real result is you. Everywhere Jesus went to get pray, he never carried Peter just that he prayed alone. Also, you're waiting for people is a lie. The one he carried them, see here, they slept. Outstanding result is not collecting prayers, it's your own. If uh, no matter, not group prayers is acceptable, but when you want outstanding result that is undeniable, is you alone. All this, I'm waiting for people to join me. It's a lie. Some people follow me to pray. One who came really that we should, we, our property. The more they pray, the more the problem increase. <laughs> you read verse 29. Okay, one to go. And as he prayed, not as they prayed, though. Take note. As what? They... <laughs> and behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, which is Elijah. You read verse 32. Now, let's see 32 together. I want to go. But Peter and they that were with him 
we are heavy with what? We are heavy with, you see all our brothers who could not come? Nothing. This is a group they belong to. Then two brothers, glory, man of God. I know if you pray, things will happen. You know, I know that if you pray, things will happen. Man, God has called you. They are sleeping. And when they were awake, they saw what? Not their glory. So it is in prayer room, glory is generated. And two men, we stood with him. How many want to see God's glory? Are you going to see God's glory? When, when you carry God's glory, people can't stop you where you go. Glory is so powerful that where they say stop others, they just tell you pass. You generate it in prayer room. Oh God of heaven. You come out like this. People look at you and they get healed. You enter your office. Glory is in the office. Your table becomes the table of everybody. You go for business. They say, we can't sign others. They pick your own design. May you begin to generate such glory in the name of Jesus. Your level of command changes automatically. That's what I mean. You just take authority at a new level. You that used to eat in the dream, you not, before it happens, you say, Sarah, get out. You wake up. You know that level has what? Changed. May your level change. Amen. Before this month is over, your level will change. Amen. You, you can't be at a uh, die pass level. You, you wear short now. Some of you, you're already 50 years in Christianity, you're still wearing diapers. Are you having a, are you using feeding bottle at all age? Generate power in prayer room. Say in prayer room. Say here. Number five. Why should you pray? Prayer gives you authority over Satan. Prayer gives you what? Authority over Satan. Hear this, let me say this to you. Satan does not respect phonetics. In fact, it angers him. If you come to a sinner and say, praise God, I'm telling you something. Somebody shout, yes. It will be very angry. You say, you speak in English to me? You twist your tongue to talk to me? <laughs> Young man. Was, well, a, a member, I don't know what I, where he is. I've not seen him for long. He said he wants to go to start ministry in Akwa I called him. <laughs> I said, where do you want to go to? He said, God sent him to Akwa I said, come back. <laughs> I said, you. Akwa I said, calm down. Don't go yet. He said, sir, sir, God told me to go to Akwa I said, wait, hold it down. Life story, you. I said, calm down. You are not strong. I don't even see you when we pray. You say, what time God, God called you? I didn't say God not call you, but calm down. He went to Akwa Ibom. <laughs> he didn't take two weeks, but then come, his mouth was bent. <laughs> I said, when you go Akwa I tell you, calm down. He said, hey, God called you. His mouth, he was talking like this. <laughs> My friend, they don't use English, yo. <laughs> Satan only respects those who pray. <laughs> you are own mouth will not bend. <laughs> we prayed for him for the mouth to be straight, amen. <laughs> After that, they listened to me. <laughs> in Acts chapter 12, if you notice in that scripture, before Peter was arrested, they killed James. They killed who? Herod killed James. And he now picked Peter to kill him. Look, negotiation wouldn't have brought Peter out. Dialogue wouldn't have brought Peter out. He was to be killed. But it was prayer. It was what? Prayer. That was the only thing Satan got scared of. If you read 
Verse 5 to 7. Acts 5 to 17 when you get home. But for time's sake, I can't do 5 to 17. When you get home, you read. But in 5 to 7, it said, Peter, the devil was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Did you hear that? They prayed, chain, they call it chain prayer. Chain what? Chain prayers without season. They pray, say, Senor, take your hands off Peter. You have killed Her uh, James, you can't kill Peter. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, verse 6, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off. From what? If they did not pray, Peter would have been killed. Life story. <laughs> Life story here. <laughs> they picked somebody in this church by kidnapping. And I was studying in my office long ago. I told the pastors to pray. They pray, pray, pray. Then I had the quickness. They said, Get up. They are about to kill him. So I stood up from my seat. And I said, every one of you enter. That time the pastors have not been posted. All the pastors, Abie, Sam, said they were all here. I said, enter. None of you is going out today. Lock the gate. Let's go and pray. I said, if this man does not come out, you won't go home. Your wives tell them you are not coming. <laughs> and I was with them. Then I told them I left. And we prayed. It was as we were praying physically. The thing they tied him loose. And God said to him, look now. Go away. Before him, they were pricing his parts. So how much are you going to buy? It was the other demand price. So we sell it for so, so, so. It was the other, a medical doctor. He said, how much are you going to buy? He's here. We'll soon kill him. They will give you the part. It was the other price that they want to buy. All the literal killings, most of them kidnap people. So how much will you buy? He's here. He had the man pricing him and then he changed everything. Nobody do just on time. And they walked out. Before he told us the story, I said, Do we know that it was? I would say that was when we prayed. He would have been dead by now. Now, listen, under this unction, anyone tied down by the enemy, I command you losing right now. And anybody that wants to kill you will be dead instantly. For who? Peter is one major weapon Satan is afraid of. They told me of a story of a lawyer who of said something happened to him, that something came and hit him on the chest. Now instead of running to a church for prayer, he ran to hospital. Something suddenly hit you, you know that they stabbed him demonically. True? Wicked men stabbed, they finished him in the spirit realm before physically was finished. Wicked men will put him, put the person's image and hit the middle. And the person will say, ah, he's sad, he's sad. All those things, the daughter say heart failure. It's satanic attack. Because that's what they will see. They, they stab the people from, they pierce the person's heart. But today, whoever wants to kill you dies now. <laughs> but if it was a prayerful person, immediately you will know that this is an attack. But people don't pray. So they don't even know where to have go to. How can you have a hit? He said physically something hit him. Boom. Hospital is first he went to. He will come to a church and after prayer, now he will go to hospital. But he does no prayer. No what? No prayer. But today marks the end of any attack on your life. <laughs> Case like Peter, you have been tied for slaughter. You'll be free right now. Amen. Why should you pray? It's because that's the only way for Satan what? Respects. Satan, if I tell you, be sure, Satan does not respect power. Ask me why. James was operating power when he killed him. He was casting out demons. The only thing Satan fears is prayer. So he will prefer you to be speaking English than pray. 
If you want to learn that the church has left prayers, hope you know the church has left prayers. Everything we go on television. You see what? We have to. If the church will go back to prayers, nobody will insult us. Church will go back to. The, the Christians don't pray again. No. We now talk like politicians. Even pastors will sit on television. You know what? The country. We needed to analyze and paralyze. <laughs> we have a tool stronger than negotiation. If we don't want any government, we don't pray them out. <laughs> Prayer is powerful. Long ago, I was not at this level. I don't even know my left from my right. Two men who are born again. I was not even born again. If there's any born again, I don't even know what born again is. They just called me and said, join us. They said, call me, bro. They said, so I said, bro, he said, yeah, join us. I said, I just joined them, not knowing what they do. But I, I learned something from that thing forever. They wrote out everything they wanted on a piece of paper. They said, Babangida, step aside. A new Christian come. They wrote the whole thing. I said, no. And then at Ogba, we're living in Ogba. Two of them, they fasted. Me, I just followed them as observer. <laughs> I don't know what they are doing. But I, I learned something. They wrote everything on a piece of paper. And at the end of the day, in the evening, they began to call one another. That country was tense. The exact word they used was, Babangida, step aside. Everything they prayed, that's how it happened. Two people. Me, because I'm not, I can't call me as number three. <laughs> <laughs> it's if two officials agree. This is if uh, many people. It's not group. It's agreement. And I learned something that if Christian, two people, oh, government happened. Shineko came. The only mistake they made, Shineko came, they did not pray that he should stay. That would have continued their prayers because they didn't pray for him to stay. They just prayed that a Christian should come. So I learned so that it is not crowd. If you don't want a government today, two people can pray it. They don't need to be pastors. In fact, pastors should not even pray because pastors may have, you can come now, me, I, I support one man, and that man support that man. So we will pray different things. You may not agree. True. Uh -huh. Just imagine I'm supporting one governor. The other pastor can be supporting another governor. And I say, in the name of Jesus, this is what I want. He said, for what? Me, I don't want that one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's better two brothers who agree. It's not anointed men that determine answer to prayers. Though. Most of them make mistake. These two heavy men of God. Two of them may not be agreeing. One may say, my heart is going for... Candidate A. Then I want to say, my heart is going for candidate B. So I told you, I shouted, Father, in the name of Jesus. You pray, I want to say, we don't be going like this. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let the church go back to what? Pray. That's our tool. Number six. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number six. Why should you pray? You obtain mercy. You obtain what? Mercy when you pray. You obtain mercy. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 let us therefore come boldly on the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. So if you want mercy, where do you go to? In prayer. Oh God have mercy on me. Is that clear sir? And today God's mercy will answer to you. In 2 Samuel chapter 24 verse 14 the B part. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord for his mercies are great. That's David praying that prayer. Lamentation 3 verse 22. It is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail us. If I want mercy, what do I do? I should pray. I should do what? I should pray. God's mercy, we answer to someone. Yeah. I said, God's mercy, we answer to someone. Yeah. I said, God's mercy, we answer to someone. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Why should I pray number seven? Prayer guarantees deliverance from afflictions. Prayer guarantees what? Deliverance from afflictions, from troubles. Afflictions even means troubles. Now, in James chapter 5, verse 13a, look at the recommendation here. Is any affliction Afflicted, let him pray. Is anyone going through afflictions? What do you do? Pray. pray. Stop going to people for negotiation. Are you in trouble? What do you do? Pray, pray before God. 
Are you going through challenges? What do you do? Pray. pray. That's what God is saying. Let him pray. That is the recommendation by God. Are you going through some challenges in life? What do you do? Pray. Stop going to tell people your problems. They can't solve them. Pray your problems before God. So I hear. Is there anything give you concern? Pray it. And God will give you an answer. Shout a better amen. Why should you pray number eight? Prayer changes destiny. Prayer changes what? Prayer changes destiny. In 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and do what? And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and will heal their land. If the way your life is going, you don't like it, pray it and change it. A woman had a child, she called his name Jabez. Jabez means I bore him with sorrow. You know, if you are from this part of the world, parents will look at the events and give you a name. Maybe there was case, and the case, they won. They now look at you and say, Justice. <laughs> if they gave back to you when the Governor General of Britain came to Nigeria. They look at you and say, Governor. <laughs> if they gave back to you inside church, they call you Mission. <laughs> they name you according to the good one or bad one. And if it's a bad one, they also name you like that. You know, they may think they're giving you a good name based on event. Say, you know, Sabi, anything good. That's why your, your life will just be going like that. Nothing good will come to you. Sibo, bad man. And Papa is, they look at a man in the village where my parents came from, they call him Igwe. Igwe means poverty. <laughs> and that was the man's name. I, I met him blind as an old man. He was poor till he died. They call him Igwe. Poor man. I've not seen where your father will look at the event and call you strong head. You will never pass in school. Anything you do in school, you go kind of last. <laughs> your, your brain will be like stone. I mean, something happened. They said, now a strong head caused this problem. Give up, give myself strong. So this boy, the mother called him what? Say, I bore you out of sorrow. The boy said, lie, lie. I won't take this kind of name. He changed his destiny through what? Prayer. You are looking you, they call you patience. And for 14 years, no husband don't come. Ah, pray now. You are so patient. Everything one get, you go there patient to get up. Pray, your mother look, you say, I, I was patient to marry your father before he came. So now, you pray. <laughs> you know, people come to they say, a man called his son endurance. I said, change this boy's name, endurance. You, if you endure to get elf job, must this boy endure to get something? I said, change this boy's name, endurance. I have a boy who works with me. His name was Fortitude. So I called him, I said, I know your father gave you this name when he lost somebody. Go and find out from him. 42 to be at a loss. <laughs> I said, ask your father how your name came. I strongly believe that. He said, Tutu, somebody died in their family. Their father now called him fortitude. I said, change it to fortune. Fortitude is not good. Fortitude to be a loss. <laughs> so this young man was called what? Jabez. Sorrow was following him everywhere. But see what he did in the first chronicle, chapter 4, 9, and 10. He said, Jabez was more honorable than his, than his brethren. And his mother called his name what? Saying, because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the name of what? Call on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, thou would just bless me. He said, I can't remain like this. Lord, change my story. Are you hearing me? If you want destiny to change, pray. Oh, God, this is not your purpose for my life. I can't be like this, begging from hand to mouth. Change my story. Lady Gretia Cantanta de Gezia. No, this is not how I'm supposed to be in life. In the name of Jesus, turn things around. I prayed the family before I had family to, to limelight when I became born again. Nothing was working. 
I can still remember the way I prayed, 2 a.m. I got up and said, oh God, this is not your purpose. My father worked close to 40 years in Shell, nothing to show for it. I said, no, this is not your plan for our life. This is not it. Turn the captivity of everyone in this family. Everyone connected to must be blessed. Bam! Chains were broken. And everybody began to rise. Now, to any family I'm connected to, people rise. Don't watch what you don't want. Stop complaining to people, the whole of our family, nobody has money. Pray! Nobody has money, you should have money. Jabez said, no, this is not God's purpose for my life. Jacob did the same thing. In Genesis chapter 32, 24 to 38, Jacob said, no, 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 I can't be like this. And Jacob was left what? At the end of this service, I will leave you alone. You pray for some five minutes. The one you prayed before, you prayed. That way you had no understanding. And Jacob was left and there. Check everybody who changed their life. They were alone. Jacob alone. Hannah alone. Jesus alone. Elijah alone. All these group prayers, they are good though. But when it comes to heavyweight transformation, is you alone. Are you getting me now? You will stand alone and say, oh God of heaven. This is not how it should be. I can't be at this level. For five years, clink, 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 for what? Hand to mouth, one room, for five years? No! I come out of this battle. I must move to where I ought to be. Say so here. You want to change your destiny? You want destiny to change? Say pray. Tell me, say, I will pray for my destiny to change. Say, I will pray. Either you're praying or you're playing. You pray. Are you getting me? And today, beginning, things will turn. Yes. Number nine. It is with prayer your needs are met. Doors are open and distance cleared. It is with prayer your needs are met. Come on. Doors are open and resistance what? Cleared. It is with prayer your needs are what? Met. Doors are opened and resistance cleared. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask, it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock, it shall be what? Open. Everyone that asks it, receive it. And that knock it, and that seek it, find it. And to him that knock it, shall be open. Ask, because it is available. Seek, because it is hiding. Knock, because there is a resistance. Is that clear? You hit the... No, God! This is not your portion for my life. The name of Jesus Christ. Turn things around. So here. Number 10. Why should I pray? Number 10. Prophecies are fulfilled. Prophecies are what? No matter what God said here, listen. It will never be fulfilled without prayers. Prophecies is not somebody standing before you. Let me say this to you for better understanding. Prophecy, many of us, we think that prophecy is not somebody standing before you with Dada, with Rastafara. And say, she, I, she, that's not the thing. The sure word of prophecy is every word of God. Is that clear? Now, for instance, God said, you shall be the head. That's a prophecy. And not the tail. Whatsoever you do, I shall prosper. That's what? Prophecy. Say that I shall be well with him. That's prophecy. By strife, anything written in God's word is what? Prophecy. In 2 Peter, let me read it to you so you better understand. 2 Peter chapter 1, 19 to 21. 2 Peter 1, 19 to 21. And, sorry, we have also a more sure word of what? With the prophecy. Where unto ye do well that ye take heed as Unto a light that shineth in a dark place unto the day dawn, and the day star arise in your house. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So prophecy you're seeing is every word of God here that concerns you. Claiming prophecies without prayer 
is trying to pluck star with your bare hands. Hear yeah, this. When a prophecy goes, God said you are going to be the head. You don't go like for instance, and God said, I will multiply with you. He said that your church will be big. It does not mean you just look at the church to be big. No. He said, I'll be the head or not. No, no, no. You don't claim prophecy like that. First Timothy 1.18. Let's read together. One to go. This charge I commit unto this son Timothy. According to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good. So every scripture, you must war it before you will win. There's no scripture here that you just watch. You will war the scripture. You take the Bible, take the word and put it before you and then fight it in prayers. Are you can understand what I'm saying? God has said it all. You will marry this year. You don't sit down to just say, I can marry this year. You know, God says so. It's not a lie, God said, but you've wore it. He said, rise you up. Take your journey. Do you know I me? Mean? 2 verse 24. Rise you up, take your journey, and pass over the river Arnold. Behold, I have given to your hand Sion the Amorite, king of Ishbon, and his land. Begin to possess and contend with him in what? It is yours. But from the days of your kingdom, have you what? Only the violent in prayer will take what belongs to them, what? By force. No contention, no possession. Everything God has said to you, contend with prayer. That's where Christians miss it. God said you'll be governor. You won't fold your hands and think you'll be governor. You will contend in what? Prayer. God said you'll be a multi-millionaire. You shall lend to nations. Don't say, you see, God said, while you are paying your tithe and offering, you contend in what? That's what you do. So here. Yes. Why should I pray number 11? Prayer makes you live a consecrated life. Prayer makes you live a what? A consecrated life. In Matthew 15, 19 to 20, for out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defile it not what? Amen. Is that true? Are you hearing me? These are the things that fight you. But look at Matthew 26, 41. One to go. Watch and what? That he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is what? You can't live a holy life if you don't pray. Well, some things will fight you. Are you going to say now? No, this thing can't destroy me. No, this habit can't kill me. The name of Jesus, I cast it out. Number 12. Prayer helps you to locate divine direction. Prayer helps you to locate what? Prayer helps you to locate divine direction. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Shall we read together? Call unto me. And I will answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call in prayer. Lord, which is the next step I should take? It was in prayer. I knew when God said to me, go to Portagot. There's no Portagot in the Bible. Is there anywhere they read Portagot? Hello? Hello? It's it's, it was in prayer. God told me, go to, it, go to Port Harcourt. There's no way. But I, where, show me where Port Harcourt is here. He said, I will show you great amount with that noise. I don't know where. Listen, when I became born again, I didn't know what to do. So I prayed in my little way. I said, God, now you have called me. I don't even know how to preach. I don't know how to preach now. I was coming from the other side. From, you know where I was coming from? Don't you know? And God called me, say, I said, God, you are calling me, me, I don't know anything, though. He said, go to a Bible school. He was very specific, and call him a name. I've never met a in my life. I didn't know him before. He said, go, there's a man. That's where I will train you for one year. And funny enough, when I went, they said, you are going to start Bible school for the first time. So God saw the beginning, and I prayed. If I didn't pray, there was a school near me in Victoria Island. So I was telling me, go to that school. Go to that school. Proximity. Does not mean connectivity. Their school was closed, but if I've gone to that school, I won't have been in ministry. 
They said, that one is very close. Why do you have to go from Victoria Island to Yenakbaja? I said, God told me, go to Yenakbaja. Yenakbaja. Not this one close to me. That the church is close to you doesn't mean that's your church. So people they say, the church is close to me. I make that ten. You are not revived. You are not doing anything. You are still going there. Thank you. You go there, you come back, you get angry. You enter the church, you are getting angry. You don't know that, that church is not your place. <laughs> you say, why? why are you going there to criticize the pastor? That shows you are bigger than the place. You enter there every time. You say, the man, no, no, if you want to please him. I said, the preacher, the vex. Yet you are sitting there. I left for Yenakpata. A distance far, because that was where I was going to be revived. So here. And if I didn't pray, I would have known where God would have sent me. Some of you, all your problems now is you have not prayed. You are busy telling everybody, I don't know where to locate this business. So I don't know whether I will locate it in area A, area B, or area C. Pray now. Let God tell you where to locate it. You have not prayed, but you are busy telling everybody. I don't know whether I will go to Canada or America. Where do I go? Or Mexico. All of them are not in America now. So which one do I go to? Tumbo, Tumbo, Boss, Calabar, Titi, Araba, Boss. <laughs> Pray to God, oh God, which country do you want me to go? Because not every open door is God's door. Pray, you have not prayed. You have been saying, can you tell me the philosophy of Canada? What do you think? Looking at Canada, Italy, America, where do you think I should go? The man, man should tell you where you should go. Yeah, the God to pray to you, you have not prayed. I think if you go to Canada, it's very good. You know, it's very quiet. British, French. Oh, wonderful. America, everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that may be the place God wants you to go. So pray. Pray you have not prayed. You are busy telling people, where do I go to? If I ask anybody's opinion, I wouldn't have gone to Badagot. You know why? They would have told me, don't go to Badagot. They don't go to church. But God told me, go to, see how the place is flourishing. Pray, oh, number 13. I would break in progress. Prayer silence your enemies. Prayer does what? Stop crying to your enemies. Go and pray about your enemies. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that has been against me in judgment, I should do what? <laughs> so you will pray. You don't use English. Isaiah 54, verse 17. If you read 14 and 15 of that same Isaiah 54, a righteous nation shall be established, that shall be far from oppression, for thou shall not fear and for terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall what? So people gathering against you is not anything to worry about. It says surely. So people, if they are not gathered against you, you are not making progress. He said, surely they will gather, but your own duty is to do what? Is to pray. So I hear. He said, pray, and they will scatter. Everyone gathered against us will scatter. Yeah. For no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that has begins in judgment shall what? Amen. Condemn. So, every tongue, whether in writing, I'll tell you something that happened long ago. When they wrote about me on social media, one young man carried on his head to carry the fake news. Because it was very popular. He was carrying it. So I just took his paper and put it. I said, I curse you in the name of Jesus. He has not come out of his problem to today. They've locked him. They've thrown him to Wahala left. And I said, since you carry fake news, you, your own, you're not going to come out. I went to, I didn't go to complain. I didn't go to, you're a Christian, stop going fighting people in here. I went to my strength. I said, since you say you won't, won't fight me, I will fight you with my own strength. I said, I curse you in the name of Jesus and you will never come out of your crisis till Jesus comes. Till today, it's not out. As I told you, it's not out of the problem. That is the weapon. Somebody wants to be an enemy, stop going to Jen Jen Sita. I think they won't fight you, fight him. Go, is it? No weapon, weapon, and every tongue. Tongue is both mouth and writing. He said, Every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Righteousness of me, said the Lord. So you go in prayer. You go in what? I pour 
Curse your tongue in the name of Jesus. From today, anything you write, nobody answers you. Cliff to the roof. Going to poverty in one week. If you don't have powerful prayer, you won't be to call poor. A man tried this church. I say be poor in one year. That man is broke. He was one of the richest in this country. He's broke today. I saw it in the Bible. In one hour, so shall that poverty come. Go to Revelation. <laughs> in one hour. So I, I, and that was the scripture I used. I said, now be poor. Since you want to worry me, be poor. <laughs> Look at it now. And in one hour, so great riches is come to north. You command the man wants to fight you one hour. You fast, you pray. One, I command you to be broke in one hour. Since you want to use your money to fight me. <laughs> if Christians no power of prayer, they won't be doing what they are doing. All this uh, 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 uh. We won't tell you, my friend, I'm telling you all the things, so go and pray. When your enemies get up against you, you go inside. Because the weapon you have, they don't have it. Look at Isaiah 8, 9, and 10. How many of you will pray? This period you will pray, in case you don't, you don't pray before you pray. Associate yourself, you shall be broken to me, all you people, and you shall be broken in pieces. And give your all your far countries, guide yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. Guide yourselves, you shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, it shall come to north. Speak the word, it shall not stand, for God is with us. Every gang up against me, you are tossed. That's how you pray. Everyone planning to undo me, go down. down. Name of your sponsors. Lose election. <laughs> Anyhow, you want to pray, you pray it. <laughs> so here. That's how powerful prayer is. Number 14. You enjoy lasting peace through prayer. You enjoy lasting what? Through prayer. In Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known what? Unto God. And the peace of of God, with passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. You want to enjoy peace? Enjoy, enjoy peace? Let me tell all married people, the only way to have peace in your marriage is prayer. Because Satan hates a successful marriage. You know why? God said if two of you shall agree as touching anything. So he knows the husband and wife are so powerful, so he brings this court of all kinds. So if you are prayerful, he has no access. Are you getting me? So, the heaviest way, and Christians don't pray. They don't what? So, Satan attacks the marriage. No peace. You are seeing your house, confusion everywhere. Your children are fighting you. You are fighting your children. No, no. God is not the author of confusion. So, wherever there's confusion, Satan is involved. And then the only thing you can use to cast him out is what? Prayer. When you see confusion everywhere, prayer is weak. Problems everywhere. This is people who don't pray. No prayer. Do you know Christians? Many Christians don't pray. You wake up in the morning. Hello? 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 No prayer. No, that's not that. Pray before you say hello. Before I allow, pray. You know, <laughs> a Yoruba man had an uncle whose name was Alao. Alao. So when phone was not popular, everywhere when they were saying hello, 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 hello. So he called his brother and said, Allah must be very rich. <laughs> so everywhere we turn, Allah, 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 Allah. <laughs> he told him I say Allah, he didn't know that they were saying hello. So when he say hello, he said, everybody know Allah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you wake up in the morning, before you say, Allah, please make, make sure. <laughs> Make sure you call on God. Say here. Yes. You now know why you should pray. Yes. That in fact, anything, first thing you should do is what? Yes. Pray. Before, before you go to tell people, pray. 
But I'll teach you within these three days how to pray. Because many times we don't even know what to pray and how to pray. I'm going to teach you how to pray. Prayer is tough. Many things that prayer is just getting up. No, 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 no. You can see that it's not so. Now, what happens when you don't pray? What happens when you don't what? What happens when you don't pray? I'm going to tell you three things for now. What happens when you don't pray? Number one, you wouldn't get results. You wouldn't get what? You wouldn't get results. Satanic forces will resist you without prayers and confession of God's word. Satanic forces do what? They will resist you. <laughs> Without prayers and confession of God's word. Anywhere you lack results, prayer is not there. He said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. So Satan will resist you and make sure you don't get what? Results when there's no prayer. If it's a church, the church will never grow. If it's business, business won't grow. Your life will be without results. Are you hearing me? Where there's no prayer, there will be no results. And where there's no result, there will be insults. Because a man without results, everyone will insult you. Today, people don't like prayer. In fact, we say, let's pray. They say, ah, why are you calling for prayer? Can't they just say today, everybody can call them money. <laughs> you will never get what? This church prays, though. Many don't know. You know, hope you know we pray. Eh? If your Christianity is without prayer, you won't last. I can tell you, you won't last. Any Christian who does not pray is very dangerous. Very what? Very dangerous. You will never get results. So I will pray. Number two, you'll be very carnal. You'll be very carnal. It is strong personal prayer life that destroys the flesh. In the presence of the Holy Spirit, the carnal nature dies. Jesus in Luke 22 verse 40 made a statement. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. So when you are not prayerful, you'll be so what? You'll be so carnal. Morning you wake up, you will not think of God first. First you think of his nonsense. Your mind will never coordinate with the things of God. Your reasoning will be totally carnal. Then number three, which is the last. You will give room for satanic attacks. When you do not pray, you give room for what? You will give room for satanic attacks. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because you adversary the devil. As a roaring lion walking about seeking women. He goes about to and fro looking for who is not praying. He knocks. When he has prayer, he leaves that door. He goes about looking for whom he may devour. Those who are not praying. So he can make them praise. He looks, he goes about. He just goes about. That's his work. He said, this one is weak. He doesn't pray. Let me show him. He won't show you. He will not show you. In 1 Corinthians 2, 11, the last scripture for today. He said, least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. You know his device? He won't allow you to pray. This kind of meeting, you say, what are you coming for? You don't really have a problem. Do you need any kind of prayer? You are very okay. After they just promoted in your office, you have money. People praying, they are poor. They are poor. A man came to me at the top, in the pinnacle in the political system in Nigeria, and he walked with support in my office. He said, Pastor, you know, we have been coming to church, but really we don't have any problem. I said, sir, we don't worship God, but we have problem worship God because... God is meant to be served. We don't serve him, but they didn't take long. He had cancer. They called me from where he was overseas. 
said, please, I should pray for him. Then God reminded me back the statement. <laughs> As he prayed for him, God in his mercy healed him. But now he can't make that kind of statement. There's no way you can make that kind of statement. And I knew that uh, uh, there's one colloquial kakino be leader. <laughs> when the cancer hit him and his life was in danger, uh, he knew that his money couldn't solve it. Then I said, say after me. He said, on the phone, he said, say. I said, say after me, Lord Jesus. He said, Lord Jesus, come to me. With cancer, he would say, Lord Jesus. If you don't say, wait, because I mean. Say, Lord Jesus, say, Lord Jesus. Come to me. I said, come to me. I accept you. I accept you. My Lord and Savior. I wouldn't tell him, say, remember, you have to, there's no point asking him that. Now he has to need Christ. I said, now, Father, with this confession, cancer, go. And God in his mercy, he knows how he answers. Please, please, don't wait for attack before you start praying. It's very dangerous. It's very what? Most times they attack, the person may not, be, may not survive it. That will not be our portion. So pray as to avert evil. Pray as to what? Pray as to... When, see, when you are very prayerful, even if evil wants to come, you just see the sign. Check. If you are very prayerful, you just see the sign. You say, oh, it's the prayer that averted this evil. But any time there's a major evil, check, there was no prayers. Prayer level was low. Either by the person. Because most times, people look at church. It's not church. It's the person involved. The prayer of Jesus did not save John the Baptist, who was his brother. So, you can be a brother to a pastor. Does not mean that you will not pray. Hey, 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 hey. They cut John the Baptist's head. He was the first cousin of Jesus. I hope you know. I hope you don't know. When Mary and John, the baby lived in the womb, they were cousins. They were, My brother, a pastor. I lie, oh. The kid, James, was close to John and close to Peter. Each one has to pray. Is anyone afflicted? Let him, not let them. They won't cut anybody around us. Yeah. But please, let's not say, you see, now I get one sister when they pray. Hey, now she, now prayer warrior. You, you to be a prayer. <laughs> you to be a prayer warrior. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, I'll be prayerful. I'll be say one more time. Say like a child of God. I'm going to leave you for the next Seven to ten minutes. You are going to pray. You experiment from today. Look at your people. <laughs> Which area of your life that is contrary to what God has for you? You are going to pray. I'm going to give first. You will pray. If you want to sit down, sit down. If you want to kneel, but make sure you are not you are not closing your eyes and lying down on the, or just by your. If you do like this, you can sleep off. So you pray for yourself. You, Jacob was left. Jesus prayed all his prayer that he called his heart alone. There was no way he called his heart where he prayed with people. When I got to understand that, I said, look, I won't wait for people. You know why? Check. The one when they carried Peter, Jesus, and John, what did they do? They slept. They just slept. I'm waiting for our prayer team. <laughs> they may come there and sleep. So I've not seen some go for all night at carry mat. <laughs> <laughs> They are going for vigil. They are going for what? They carry, they carry foam with them. He said, yeah, what are you going for? Say, today our church will have vigil. So it's all night, it's all sleep. You will be left alone. Oh God of heaven, this situation must turn. There must be a change. It can't be like this. It is written. Whatsoever the Lord doeth shall be forever. You are the one that gave me this work. No man can terminate me untimely. I decree. I'm a faithful titan. Therefore, every devour I rebuke you. No weapon formed against my destiny shall prosper. Everywhere they want to guard against me, spiritually or physically, I cause that guard in the name of Jesus. The blessing of the Lord did make it rich and added no sorrow. You are the one who blessed me. Anyone that wants to bring sorrow to them, I cause the source of that sorrow. I command, are you ready? We will do theory and practicals every day. Every what? You will pray. You can, in the church where you are, you are free to move to a corner. And, but you will pray. Oh, this kind of prayer is not, Father. Father. Father, I will talk to you, Father. No, no, no. You will be serious. You will not care about your neighbor. You will not care about what the person is there. You are going to talk to God. Some of us, we have to pour our heart like Hannah. Some of us, we have to cry like Jabez. Some of us, we have to pray like Jacob. So we have to pray like Jesus, where his countenance 
turned. He said, Lord, I can't be at this level of Christianity. I must shift in command. That from today, when I go anywhere, there must be a higher level of command. Are you ready? Are you ready? Now for seven minutes, because why I don't want to give you any prayer point, each one has a different prayer point. So you take your own scripture, pray. Someone may be asking for fruitfulness, another person may be asking for healing, another person may be asking for deliverance, so you know what you want. Is that true? Now if you don't know what, if you don't know the scripture, use John 16 to the 3. In case you don't know what to pray with. He said, and in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Very, very, something. Whatever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Verse 24. He that though, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask, it shall be received, and your joy shall be what? Say, so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask this, receive today. Are you ready? Are you ready? Go ahead in all churches, five to seven minutes. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. In the name of Jesus, pray. One more minute, pray. Pray. One more minute, pray. Call on God. Call on God. Le lise kuta brakati akutale. In class also, le brakati akatale ke brakati akachata. Anyone against my life, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Anyone against my destiny, go ahead and pray. Satan's agents will cause in the name of Jesus. Begin to thank him. Begin to tell God thank you. Go ahead and tell God thank you. Go ahead and tell God thank you. Lift those hands and tell God thank you for the answers to your prayers. Are you telling God thank you? Go ahead and tell God for that thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' most wonderful name. Now, The Prophetic with David Ibiomi. Lift your hands to heaven. Go with your new fire. Amen. As you leave this service, before you come tomorrow, may the oil on you be renewed. Amen. Grace to fast. Grace to pray. Amen. Grace to be on fire. Receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every soul you open your mind to invite will come with you. Amen. By tomorrow, through you, someone will come to Jesus. Amen. Go in peace Amen. and keep succeeding. Amen. In Jesus' name.